So we're going to talk about virtual, uh, vir what we call Virtual USA. And we think that Virtual USA, which is supported by the Department of Homeland Security, Science and Technology uh, Directorate, in partnership with a number of states across the country, uh, is a good example of uh, not only President Obama's call for creating collaborative government, but we believe that it uh, very well meets with uh, O'Reilly's maxim on how to create government as a platform. Now, what Virtual USA is, is um, it's going to be a significant, create a significant technical and cultural advance in how uh, our country and the ability of our country to respond to catastrophic events. It addresses the lack of interoperability that exists at all levels, data, voice, information, and it does this by creating a virtual platform to seamlessly aggregate, share, and share information and collaborate. Uh, to do this, you have to understand what one of the core missions of Homeland Security is the importance of making information actionable. There's a lot of information out there. It's coming from a lot of sources. And if you can't use it, so what good is it? One of the big challenges in all this is the community that we serve. And it's a very large stakeholder community. It's a very fragmented stakeholder community. In this, from the standpoint of just the public safety agencies, there are 55,000 agencies that are generally very small or volunteer agencies. Moreover, those agencies have invested billions of dollars of, of, uh, in infrastructure that cannot interoperate, cannot talk to one another. And we cannot ask them to just dump that infrastructure because there's no way to replace it. Moreover, as a result of that, you have a very stovepipe governance structure. So the lack of the ability to make information actionable is what has helped lead to the kind of tragedies in the rescue and recovery activity in Katrina and pretty much every other disaster that's taken place. Because if you can't get the information to the people who need it when they need it, then you obviously are, have a big problem. So we embarked on, uh, DHS that is, embarked on creating Virtual USA after looking at Virtual Alabama, which I'll get into in a minute. But one of the architects of Virtual Alabama, who is here today, Chris Johnson, suggested that I put, put forward four takeaways and what the purpose is from this, uh, from this discussion. To, base, to give everybody a baseline on how to succeed in this kind of activity. So the purpose is to bring data together to make better decisions. The key takeaways is that you have to, and not in this order necessarily, but you have to understand that all data essentially, all information, all incidents, everything starts at the local level. You have to be able to make sure that they can use what they have. Because they, as I said, they can't, get rid of the, uh, they can't get rid of their investment. You have to focus on the end user. You have to build for the end user. You have to focus on collaboration. And you have to make sure, above all else, that it's sustainable. The first breakthrough in this that we, we came across, and it was not a DHS invention, it was done by the state of Alabama, is Virtual Alabama. And this was a tremendous breakthrough in terms of business processes and business model in how this work is done. It started with a challenge by the governor of Alabama after Katrina when he could not get access to the uh, $40 million that he invested in, in, uh, in getting GIS data. And he went, turned to the Homeland Security Director, Jim Walker, and his team and said, fix this for me. So they then developed criteria for how to fix it, and it was essentially based on the four takeaways uh, with one other, one other critical element in this, which is that they had to be able to aggregate and integrate disparate data sets no matter what the, the origination of it was. So they needed some kind of standards-based open architecture system. And they went out, they did their research, and what they found was Google Earth Enterprise. And they based, built Virtual Alabama based on Google Earth Enterprise. As a result of that, what they were able to do is get all that GIS data, and it took eight months or so to do it because they had to go out to all the localities and convince the localities who own that data and who control that data and who essentially will be the ones who update and maintain that data that this is something valuable to them. So they did. They found the triggers. They found the tipping points in every county. And over eight months, they got all that information. Moreover, they got a lot more than they bargained for because not only were they able to integrate all that GIS data in virtual Alabama, but they began to get hundreds of other data sets because as the local owners and operators started using this, they found other purposes for it. So you can see on some of this that they, had, um, they were able to map their police and fire. They were able to do things like get uh, real-time uh, video feeds. They were able to do 3D modeling. They were able to get um, 
the architecture of what, of what a building looks like, the floor plans in case you have to go into a school and a hostage rescue. They're able to get video feeds from that area. They, moreover, one of, you, you see the value in this very, very quickly for them when after another one of the natural disasters, they had to be able to go in there and, find, and, and make their application to FEMA for relief. Normally that process takes months and months and months and months to do, or maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it takes a long time. Because they basically go out in trucks and go, go survey the area. Now what they can do, you can see on, on, on the slide, here is a before picture and here's the after picture. And they can, they can uh, cursor over one of the areas and find out well, this, what, the, what the tax assessment was, uh, you know, what the value of those homes were, and it, they were able to do this in a much, much quicker time than they ever did before. They were able to put all kinds of data sets on there. They now have hundreds of data sets. They have over 5,000, maybe by now 6,000 users, hundreds of agencies using this, and they're using it for their own purposes, but those purposes also serve the purposes of Alabama when they need to, when they need to deploy this in an emergency. So virtual Alabama was a breakthrough. One thing about it that was very critical, it was standards-based open architecture. It's also cheap. It's not free, but it's cheap, which makes it sustainable. Well, after virtual Alabama, along came something called Viper, Virginia Interoperability Picture for Emergency Response. Unlike the Alabama model, this was based on an ESRI platform. Again, not free, but cheap. They were able to pretty much do the same thing that they did in Alabama. As you can see, it's a different looking picture. It's used for, it started with a different purpose in mind. It's housed at the Emergency Operations Center and it's used 24-7. They were also able to integrate analytics on it so that rather when they needed to get some data, to get some information, rather than sorting through a lot of undifferentiated information, they were able to basically automate that process and save themselves a lot of time. What they've done with this now is they have four levels that goes all the way from behind firewalls to use by the citizens. Anybody can go to a URL and go look at some of the information on Viper. They've also, in the process, and this is some of the information on it, of making it mobile. So that you can send it out to an iPhone, to a BlackBerry application, critical information goes out to the citizen who are often actually the actual first responders and they can get that information when they need it. The value proposition has been proven in one exercise. They did the exercise with half the people in half the time, did it better and saved $60,000. The breakthrough for Virtual USA came when the Viper team, uh, Chris McIntosh and his team, and the Virtual Alabama team, Chris Johnson, Jim Walker, and their team were at a conference together, sitting side by side, and some naive person asked them, can you share data together? Can you do this seamlessly? They said, go away, come back. Came back, in 10 minutes, they were doing it. They were seamlessly sharing hazmat data. They also were using WebEOC to collaborate online. When we looked at this, all of the players, DHS, the two states uh, sitting in the room said, if we can do this, why not Virtual USA? So why not? So what DHS decided to do was embark on creating Virtual USA to create a seamless information aggregation sharing and collaboration platform virtually across the nation so that first responder community and all the other related stakeholders and critical infrastructure owners and operators, citizens, can get the information they need in the way they need to see it when they need it so that they can act on it appropriately. The concept behind Virtual USA, the, the game plan was do it by working circles. We're not going to do it all at once, but we're going to start a series of pilot projects. The first one is in the southeast United States. It's ongoing now. There are eight states involved, seven active, one in an observing capacity. And basically what they're doing is they are driving toward a demonstration of this capability by sometime in the early fall. And then in phase two, they'll do more than that. They're going to institutionalize what, what they've created. In the meantime, these eight states have already made progress. This is already being successful. When we started the pilot, only two of those states had any kind of platform. Now they all do. Moreover, they're learning from one another how to collaborate, how to share best practices, and are actually working together offline in ways they never did before. This is now proliferating almost on its own. There are, there, we are, um, DHS, the states, are, are actually taking, sharing, not only sharing their best practices, but sharing their code that makes Virtual Alabama and Viper work. There are over 50 installations of this across the country at all levels, federal, state, city, county, that people are beginning to use this capability. And the job of DHS is to begin to stitch this together, 
to work with those jurisdictions to stick this together to make this a virtual capability that will revolutionize the way in which we prepare for and are able to respond to events across the country. Moreover, we look at this as only phase one. If I say phase one, I mean in the, in, it's in the emergency response community. Phase two is why can't we use this for other purposes? In fact, in Alabama, they're already using it for economic development, environmental re remediation, and other, and, and other applications. Thank you.